भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओ नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Super Soul Farm. This is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host Raghunath and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York City, Hastu Adas. Welcome to the show. Wisdom of the Sages is a daily study of yoga wisdom literature focusing on the beautiful Srimad Bhagavatam. Fantastic for yoga teachers. If you're a yoga teacher out there, you're going to like this. Fans of yoga culture. If you're a fan of yoga culture, you're going to like this. And those who want to add spiritual direction and upgrade their life, welcome to the upgrade. When I tell you, Kostuba, yeah, I did the I did the full fast yesterday. The it near jaw, the, the near jaw. That means you, no the, no water fast. It, it happens once a year. It's called Bima Akadasi. So Akadasi, maybe we should explain Akadasi a little bit. Just what do you think? Well, if, if you, it seems like that has arisen in your heart, it's arisen. Let this thing blossom. It's a, it's two days a month, and the, it's a, a lunar month, so it's the eleventh day of the waning moon, and the eleventh day of the waxing moon. Eka dasi, right? Eka dasa. It means Eka, the 11, 11. 10 plus one, like ten and one. Eight, right? Eka yeah. is one. Dasa. So the eleventh day. So the eleventh day of the waxing moon. The eleventh day of the waning moon. Yes. And um, it's a day to, it's a day, it's almost like a little, uh, you know, double coupon day. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Double, some days you go to the store, it's double coupons. What? And so it's like a little extra push that Krishna gives you on those days to back off of just like feet in my face and put a little bit more concentration on my spiritual life. And you know what happens? What Krishna gives you a little boost. He gives you a little push. He gives you a little, you know, he says, he says like, he gives you a little uh, boost up the, you know, you climb in a tree, he gives you a little boost. Here, get up there, get over the fence. And so okay. if you've been struggling with stuff, it gives you a little bit of an edge. And they say the minimum you do is you just fast from grains and beans and just, which is hard for a lot of people just because grains is usually the substance of the, of the diet. But, um, Arjuna's brother Bhima, who was notorious for, he just could not stop eating this guy. He went to Krishna and said, I cannot eat. I cannot fast on Akadasi. And so Krishna said, okay, you do, for you, you do one day a year where you eat nothing, not even water. And that will make up for all the Akadasis you've missed. So, because you know, I miss a few. I, I went to do it yesterday and I did great. I feel like I actually did grouchy. I did, it was very grouchy at four o'clock. I did great up till four o'clock. And then my wife came home. She's like, how are you doing? What's going on? I was like, nothing. Leave me alone. I'm grouching out the whole family. And then finally, you know what I did? I just fought it and went for a 14 mile bike ride. And I felt. I That's crazy. To... That's the last day I want to do the, the 14 mile bike ride. I mean, I guess you know 14 what? miles isn't so far on a bike. In one sense, but but, uh, still, although I will say around like, here, everything's a hill. I live like in oh, peaks and valleys. Yeah, right. But it was good. I feel good. And uh, you know what? Yeah, we have to get on the show. We, there's like a whole Krishna fasting. I don't know if you know about this. It's like this Krishna obsessed with fasting and water fasting. Gora knows these guys. And this guy's been like fasting for like two years. I kid you not. Very interesting devotee. Who's that? He's. I don't think he's initiated. He think he's. He lives in Mayapur, but he's a very nice guy, a nice devotee. Okay. He's been around a while and uh, just fasts all the time. And they have well, a whole fa fasting group. But he's just like interesting people to bring on the show. He's a very interesting person. You know, um, just saying this, it reminds me that you know, you you know that song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Shuddha Bhakta Charnarenu. Yeah, sing it. I mumble most of the words, but, <laughs> but uh, there he Bengali, says, this, a beautiful Bengali song. Bengali, yeah. So, uh, so the second second verse is Madhavatiti Bhakati Janani, Jatane Palanakori. You are the mother the, of devotion. The holy days like a Kadashi and Jamasmi are the mother of devotion. 
for those devotees who respect them. They give birth to bhakti, right? They give, they give birth to bhakti. So yeah. if we honor those days well and focus. And, you know, the fasting, it, 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 when you think about it, it's kind of like, um, you know, nowadays the way a lot of people eat is kind of like this, some kind of, it's all meant to be convenient, you know? Usually it's not healthy, but, you know, it's like whether it's packaged in some way where it's like half cooked already or you order it out or whatever. Ramen but, noodles. Yeah, but like, you know, what cooking really means, you know. I love ramen, is, I love ramen noodles. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, you have to work. You have to work to, to feed your family, to, 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 to prepare it all, to cook it all, to clean it all. You do that three times a day. It's a lot of work. You say on this day, we're just going to fast. We're just going to, you know, we're just going to, whatever the bodily dem demands are, we're just not going to, we're actually going to um, kind of get used to not just responding to whenever our body just tells us, feed me now. We're not going to go through all the hassle of cooking and preparing and cleaning and, and all of that. And we're just going to focus on hearing and chanting. And for, for every two weeks, we're going to do it for one day. Sri Erotica says, yesterday I realized we eat too much. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. True. I, you know what I realized yesterday? I realized I just like to eat out of boredom. I like, I, 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 I eat for many, many uh, reasons except hunger. It's just a way to like cover up various emotions of mine. And so when you do things like this, it's, it's, just, it's a good way to start letting those emotions surface and deal with some emotions. Deal with the emotions. Okay. Now, Rogo, before we go too far into this, we, we had thought that we would, we had discussed reading something this morning. So if we go, if we keep talking about Akadashi, we're never going to get to the Bhagavatam. It's all the Bhagavatam, man. This is all part of uh, spiritual <laughs> oh, culture. I forgot about that. You know, it's all, all the right. Bhagavatam. It's an ongoing conversation. Then how about this part of the Bhagavatam? And it's good to understand the double coupon days. Okay. No, I'm, I'm not at all suggesting that we shouldn't have just discussed that. But what I am suggesting is that we also read what we had uh, discussed. Plan to read it. Okay. You with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is coming from, and you know, a lot of our people have been uh, reading Mahabharata or listening to the recording of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Great. The translation by a very nice gentleman named Krishna Dharma, right? I find that to be one of my favorite translations. There's two I really like. One is yeah. Kamala Subramaniam and one is yeah. Krishna Dharma. I'm with you. Both and of them, you really get to know the characters and, and, mm. and you start to fall in love with the characters. I find anything shorter of the Mahabharat, you can't really cry when Karna dies. You can't really, you know, other, when you get to really know these, the character development of these, it like yeah. puts you in such an emotional state. So, but my favorite is this Krishna Dharma and it's available on Audible for those who are lazy like me and just can only hear books. Is it him reading it on Audible or is it someone No, it's this it? other person reading it and this other person's great. I can't remember who it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is something that he just posted on his Facebook page, but I just thought it was so, uh, it was just nice, clear thinking, right? It, it, the, the way that he laid it out. Have you met um, him? I've never met him before. No. He lives in London. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, and then he, he quotes a, a commentary that we read, I don't know, a month and a half back or something like that, that is also worth reading again. Please read. Okay. This, so is, his, this, this is his Facebook post? This is his Facebook post. And I this want is about as much of Facebook as I want for today. Okay. I want the <laughs> quote from Krishna Dharma. So, so then, and by the way, he's going to talk about golf here. We talked about golf yesterday. I think if you golf, we're not trying to get on your case. <laughs> yeah, you golfers like, out there. Okay, we all, we all, we're we're going to make two golfing slags yeah, and but two we're going we're to hit the golfers again here. So, so let's read this. <laughs> he, he says, bounding along on my morning walk today, I went past a local golf course. It's so British, bounding. Bounding along. That? Bounding along. Um, and, and I think this was written kind of, um, I think this was posted maybe in April or late March. So I think this has to do with, you know, the, the, the um, lockdown maybe had kicked in and the pandemic or was, or was a talk. So I, I think he's writing in relation to that. So he says, bounding along on my morning walk today, I went past a local golf course, still nicely manicured, despite no one being able to use it. I was reflecting on how we so badly miss the point of human life explained by Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. And this is how he summarizes it. Grow food, perform sacrifice, be happy, and come back to me. <laughs> it's kind of like a very simple way to that's, that's summarize. Nice. That's, a that's, a bumper, that's a bumper sticker right yeah. there. 
Yeah, grow food, perform sacrifice. In other words, understand that the gifts that you get, that offer them back to God and, and reconnect in that way, right? Yeah. And then you'll be happy. You'll live a happy life. Um, and then, and in the end, you reconnect with God. You come back to God. Grow food, perform sacrifice, be happy, come back, and come back to me. Uh, get online. We missed that. He missed that one. <laughs> get, get online. online. Check your email. Fight with one another. <laughs> eat process. Poison your food, then eat the food. Don't offer it. Yeah. <laughs> Human life provides an opportunity for the soul to, to exit the miserable material world where birth, death, old age, and disease are permanent features as we are now being gently reminded. However, not hearing Krishna's message, we, ins we instead squander our time trying to knock balls into holes, utilizing, you, you, it's evil, utilizing vast swaths of fine arable land in the process. Meanwhile, we create an artificial economy that makes us dependent on fragile supply lines for all our necessities that we could and should so easily produce ourselves with just a little organization and effort as per Krishna's direction. Very, very, you know, yeah. very clear thinking, isn't it? Yeah. And we are taught from an early age that we have to plug into this mindless, I'm sorry, plug into this yeah. madness by working like an ass to make a few people wealthy so that they will mercifully give us a few pounds to buy the that, goods. That's, that's dollars. That's, that means like dollars, <laughs> for right? For those okay. who are not in the... Uh, <laughs> a few quid. <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out, Ragnar. We were, a few we pounds, been, what does that mean? We would have been lost without you. <laughs> um, so, so again, he says, and we are taught from an early age that we have to plug into this madness by working like an ass to make a few people wealthy so that they will mercifully give us a few pounds to buy the goods that they are selling. Then, in the scant spare time we have left over, what do we do? We can get out there and knock that ball around. Surely time for a root, surely, it is surely time for a root and branch rethink. I haven't heard that phrase before, have you? Root and branch? That must be really British. I guess it means I like a full on, one. maybe. Like I a need full, a full root and branch rethink. It's time for. It's time for. Unless he full... just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm, th I'm trying to think of some either. old British thing, Cockney. Th I don't know. Root and branch. Ma you think that's Ma Cockney where's slang Ma for something where's, else? Where's, root and where's branch Bob means. It's a little, it's a, it's, it's it, a, it could be one of those Cockney slangs. Root and branch yeah. means the dog and bone. <laughs> okay, but um, bone. surely time for root and branch rethink. Here's Srila Prabhupada's thoughts on the matter. Okay, now this is a commentary. We've read it. We've actually posted a quote or two from it on our Instagram page, which is worth going checking out and following. But I, I was thinking, Raghunath, why don't we read this back and forth? Because every sentence okay. is powerful. It's going to be so sort of, are you ready for this? It's going to be sort of like a, a spoken word with me and Kostuba. Oh, We're going to go back word, and forth. Okay. A little, like almost like a run DMC. Okay. I'll be Ron. Let's not do quite like that. <laughs> Human um, prosperity. All right, there. Yeah, go ahead. Hit it. Human prosperity flourishes by natural gifts and not by gigantic industrial enterprises. The gigantic industrial enterprises are products of a godless civilization, and they cause the destruction of the noble aims of human life. The more we go on increasing such troublesome industries to squeeze out the vital energy of the human being, the more there will be unrest and dissatisfaction of the people in general, although a few only can live lavishly by exploitation. The natural gifts, such as grains and vegetables, fruits, rivers, the hills of jewels and minerals, and the seas full of pearls are supplied by the order of the Supreme. And as he desires, material nature produces them in abundance or restricts them at times. The natural law is that the human being may take advantage of these godly gifts by nature and satisfactorily flourish on them without being captivated by the exploitative motive of lording it over material nature. The more we attempt to exploit material nature according to our whims of enjoyment, the more we shall become entrapped by the reaction of such exploitative attempts. If we have sufficient grains, fruits, vegetables, and herbs, then what is the necessity of running a slaughterhouse and killing poor animals? A 
man need not kill an animal if he has sufficient grains and vegetables to eat? The flow of river water, the flow of river waters, waters fertilizes the fields, and there is more than there is more than what we need. Minerals are produced in the hills, and the jewels in the ocean. That's period. Okay. If the human civilization has sufficient grains, minerals, jewels, water, milk, etc., then why should it hanker after terrible industrial enterprises at the cost of the labor of some unfortunate men? But all these natural gifts are dependent on the mercy of the Lord. What we need, therefore, is to be obedient to the laws of the Lord and achieve the perfection of human life by devotional service. And Shri what are the Bhagavatam? 1840. Yeah. And so, and what are the laws? Um, grow some food, perform some sacrifice, be happy and come back to me. It's not that complicated. Somehow we've made it very complicated, haven't we? Very simple. Simple. <sighs> that, was, that was good. That was a good little read. I like that. Um, All right. Bhagavatam now? Or that was Bhagavatam, excuse me? That was Bhagavatam, but we're going to dip into the Bhagavatam where we are. Okay, okay I got a real noisy dog in here just swagging his tail, Nobody slapping hears, over things. No one hears that dog? I hear the, the nails on the floor a little bit. But, He's like uh, clumping, clomping, chomping, knocking things over. Just let him be, Rogu. Just let the dog be. Let him be happy. Why must you have cut him? those toenails of the dog? What's up? <laughs> He's like a tap dancing. <laughs> All right. All right, Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 13, text 18. Dhritarashtra quits home. Love that title. We're going to chant the invocation. Om nam narayanam namatskritya naram chayva nirotamam devim saraswatim vyasam tatojayam udiraye. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very which is the very means of conquest, one should res offer respectful obeisances to the personality of Godhead Narayan, unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author. Nasta prayeshva badreshu nityam Bhagavat sevaya Bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service to the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Text 18. Mahatma Vidura knew all this, and therefore he addressed Dhritarashtra saying, my well, dear What king, did he know about? He knew all this. He knew about, let's see where, he was. Um, Text 17, insurmountable eternal time imperceptibly overcomes oh, yeah. those who are too much attached to family affairs and are engrossed in their thoughts. Right. We last left off where, um, you know, everybody's getting old in the palace, and the great sage Vidura is coming back, and he's given some serious warnings to his brother, whom he loves and whom he feel he really missed the boat on making good choices in life. And now he's coming back in a very serious way. And this is a type of love. It's called tough love. He's about to give his brother some tough love. <laughs> um, Mahatma Vidura knew all this about time, about how time waits for no one. And therefore he addressed Dhritarashtra saying, my dear king, please get out of here immediately. Do get not delay. Here. Get out of here. <laughs> That's our California. The Californians. Get out of here, Drew Rostra. <laughs> what are you doing here? Just see how they have, just see how fear has overtaken you. The, uh, this frightful situation cannot be remedied by any person in this material world. My Lord, it is the personality of Godhead as eternal time, also known as Kala. Oh, you skipped the purport, didn't you? Oh, I thought 18? we were just reading the text. Now let's read the purport. Okay, all right. Purport of 18. Cruel, nice, I like how this starts. Cruel, Cruel death. death cares for none. 
be he Dhritarashtra or even Maharaj Yudhisthir, right? Whether you're, uh, whether you're a little evil or whether you're really good, cruel death doesn't care. Cruel death is coming. Therefore, spiritual instruction as given to old Dhritarashtra was equally applicable to younger Maharaj Yudhisthira. As a matter of fact, everyone in the royal palace, including the king and his brothers and mother, were rapidly attending the lectures. So this but is it, going down in front of everyone. Yeah, he's just calling him out in front of everyone, and everyone benefits from it. But he must but, have been doing it really from a place of, like it was heavy, but not like, I don't know, if, you know, coming from his soft heart at the same time, you know? The interesting thing is, <laughs> depending on how you've cultivated your life, you can't hear certain things. Mm -hmm. Like uh, we can have, you can be in a class on the Srimad Bhagavatam and something being go, Oh my God, that was spoke to me. And even though the exact same thing is true for the person next to you, they may not be in a part of their life. So by hearing on a regular basis, we are getting the fruit ripe to be picked. So when we do hear truth, it's going to start to resonate with us. Now, Dhritarashtra, he actually, he, I can't be a spoiler here, but anyway, Yudhisthira, oh. who's been spiritual his entire life, he's here, of course, of course, of course. Right. Anyway, the word Rajan is especially addressed to Dhritarashtra significantly, right? He calls him a king. Dhritarashtra was the eldest son of his father, and therefore, according to law, he was to be installed on the throne. But because he was blind from birth, um, that means he was actually blind, he couldn't mm -hmm. see, he was disqualified from his rightful claim, right? Because a king has to be able to see because a king is actually a warrior. Warriors, yeah. King doesn't just sit back and say, okay, you guys go out to war. <laughs> you guys do it. I'll be back here checking on the, on the office, the Oval Office. This will be good. No, you want to you want to start a war? Okay, you and your sons go to war. That's how it was. Hmm. And now you and your sons and daughters can go to war. His young brother, how many presidents would, you know, claim war, claim invasions into other countries if they themselves had to go fight the war? I think we'd be have a lot. We should bring be, back this standard. They wouldn't become president if, they, if that was part of the job description. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's part of being commander in chief. Get in there. Get on your horse. His younger, right? Yeah. Can you imagine Donald Trump on a horse? Just sit with that for a while. But he could not, where am I? But because, because he was blind, he was blind from birth, from he was birth. disqualified. Okay. But he could not forget the bereavement and his disappointment was somewhat compensated after the death of Pandu, his younger brother. His younger brother left behind him some minor children and Dhritarashtra became the natural guardian of them. So Dhritarashtra is the uncle of the five sons of Pandu, including mm -hmm. Yudhisthira and Arjuna. Um, but but at, at the heart, he wanted to become the factual king and hand the kingdom over to his own sons, headed by his evil son, doo -doo -doo, mm. Duryodhan. <laughs> With all these imperial, amb imper imperial ambitions, Dhritarashtra wanted to become a king. And he, con he contrived all sorts of intrigues in consultation with his brother-in-law, the evil. Chuck Shakuni. Oh, okay, here's a worst. trivia question for you, Mara. Let's bring Mara back into the picture here. It's a tricky one. Who is Shakuni's sister? Ooh, can I get a hint? No. You Let's just got you one if you you just got one if you listen to what we just read, right? I'm gonna go. Uh, from the chat board, Gandhari. <laughs> oh, man. Boom. Chat board, who got that? Devaki. 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 She grew up reading those Amar Chitrakata. It doesn't count. That's <laughs> what happens when you read Mahabharata comic books from childhood. Okay. Maharaj Yudhisthira, as a matter of duty. No, no. But everything something. failed. But everything failed by the will of the Lord. And at the last stage, even after losing everything, men and money, he wanted to remain as a king, being the eldest uncle of Maharaj Yudhisthira. Maharaj Yudhisthira, as a matter of duty, maintained Dhritarashtra in royal honor. And Dhritarashtra was happily passing away 
his numbered days in the illusion of being a king or the royal uncle of King Yudhisthira. You, you know, it's like, um, like say the emperor has no clothes, right? It's like, he's there thinking, okay, I'm still living in luxury. I'm still kind of the king. Everybody else is like, you're just an old man that's become completely useless. You're a disgrace. You caused all this destruction. Your, your, your nephew is um, so kindly maintaining you. You know, wake up, right? Yeah, yeah. He's in a very, very um, ignominious, is that the word? Ignominious situation, Mara. What do you think about that? Wow. I was like, I, I think I never heard that word before. I don't think it is a word. <laughs> I just made it up. <laughs> Sounds right, though. It's very ignominious. It's very ign- Look it up, Mara. Ignominious. <laughs> I surprise my wife sometimes with words. Vidura, therefore, sarcastically addressed Dhritarashtra as the king, which he was actually not. So he was be- Vidura was being a little sarcastic, a little prodding there. Oh, the king. king. <laughs> everyone, in the- everyone is the servant of eternal time. There you go. And therefore, no one can be king in this material world. That's a nice way to put it. Hmm. King means the person who can order. The celebrated English king wanted to do order time and tide, but the time and tide refused to obey his order. Okay, who's here's a trivia. Who is that English king? George? Nope. You know one English king. Uh, there was King George the Third. That's all I got is George. I did a little research on this one. Did you? Mm-hmm. Wait, do you know this? Tide and tide, he says tide and tide, wait for no man. Yeah. It was King Canute. There was a, a king named Canute? Canute. And, uh, no, it's Newt, like Newt Rocher, <laughs> not well, Canute. 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 You say it real quick, I think. Canute. Newt Rocher. Newt. Newt Rocher. It's like so a Swedish. Ed, I think it's Swedish. He was, he was, he was Swedish. He was like one of these Vikings that came over, I think, you know? And, um, the story goes um, that he sat his chair, his like thrown down on the beach and he commanded the tide not to come. And it still came. And so he said, time and tide wait for no man. But others say that he was actually trying to tell his people, like, I'm not divine, you know, time and tide wait for no man. Like he did, he never actually brought his thing out. to. But I believe that that's what Shil Prabhupada is referring to here. Huh. I'm Newt. learning stuff from Newt. Newt. Therefore, one is a false king in the material world. And Dhritarashtra was particularly reminded of this false position and of the factual fearful happenings which had already approached him at that time. Vidura asked him to get out immediately if he wanted to be saved from the fearful situation which was approaching him fast. Get out of here. Get out. Get out of here. He did not ask Maharaj Yudhisthira in that way because he knew that that a king like Maharaj Yudhisthira is aware of all the fearful situations of this flimsy world and would take care of himself in due course, even though Vidura might not be present at that time. You know, it's, it's interesting how Prabhupada just, how he kind of laid that out was just like, a king means a person who can order, who can rule. But how much can we really rule? Right. All right. Like I can't rule my body to stop aging. So I have to realize that no matter what my, my material situation is, I'm dependent here. I'm, you know, I'm ultimately I'm weak. The, the, ultimately none of us are that, Therefore, what did he say that, that therefore one is a false King in this material world. Right. If that, <laughs> yeah, if, if you if that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Nice realization. I'm, I'm just trying to think about, imagine if someone, wherever you're, if wherever you're at in life right now, some of you have kids, some of you have no kids, you don't have kids, but you have a, a house you really like. Some of you have a, a dear spouse. Here is the wisest person in your life coming. Sort of like barging right in. You haven't seen him in years. He's been on pilgrimage for years. And he says, what are you doing with your life? Get out, give up everything immediately and leave. It's tough, especially in your, if you're older, you're getting a little bit more comfortable. You're getting a little bit more settled. And he's saying, no, no, no. 
Your retirement is meant to prepare to leave your body. You have to, everything that you learned as a child, because in the chill, you're supposed to learn all this stuff, you know, in childhood. Yeah. Right. And then you get married and you still have a spiritual life, but you know, you have household duties and life duties and kid duties and you got to drive your kid to soccer. I get it. And then we're supposed to zip it up and we're supposed to get very, very focused on our spiritual life. This is what retirement is. And so now he's getting older and older and older and he's still not taking it seriously. So Krishna, divine, the universe sent Vidura to lay it down for him. And everyone is benefiting hearing this. Text 19. You, you, want, you have to hand it to him that he actually hears it, right? Yeah, he does hear it. You see that in the Bhagavatam quite a few places. Like King Rahugana, who was being carried on his palaquin, and he starts to lay into one of the palaquin carriers for not carrying it right, just like a totally arrogant, you know. An arrogant king. King, just like. And then, and then but that carrier was Jadabharta, this great soul. And so Jadabharta begins to, without even getting upset, just speak straight truth to him. And then he gets off that path, he bows down and he realizes I made a huge mistake. Who am I to be saying this? You are actually a greatly realized soul. Please forgive me. And he takes in that message, you know? So we, we see that. I think it's one of the things maybe our culture has just become so bad at is to be able to like be corrected to, to you know, we just go down fighting, you know? But to hear, to hear good advice and, and, and to change, you know, um, the way that we see things, to apologize, all of that, you know? So Dhritarashtra is going to hear this message and he's going to, he's going to, he's going to get out of here. If anyone a, knows we're doing this Saturday night, Saturday night <laughs> live, Cal, the Californians, when they say, get out of here, they really, Californians really have a whole completely different accent. Their, their, their statements, their statements are like questions. And so I went to the store and I got in my car and drove down the 101 Heading north on Beverly Glen. Okay. 19. This frightful situation cannot be remedied by any person in this material world. My Lord, it is the Supreme Personality of Godhead as eternal time mm. that has approached us all. Mara, name that verse from the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says the same thing. She's just she's going right for the message board. Help me, David. Help me. <laughs> David, help me. Aravind, help. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's the one that Oppenheimer quoted, the one who built the atom bomb. Time Kalos I am. Me. Kalos me. Kalos me looks like a creep, Pravid Ho. Time I am, the destroyer of all worlds, and I've come to destroy all people. Okay. Mm. Whoever is under the influence of Kala, eternal time, must surrender his most dear life. <laughs> and what to speak of other things, such as wealth, honor, children, land, home. It's got, time is going to come when you expect it and when you don't expect it. I mean, time, the death is going to come when we expect it or don't expect it. It's just going to show up one day, knock on the door. There's going to be a grim reaper there. I'm going to go, oh, today? Today's that day? He's going to say, give me your wealth. Give me your honor. Give me your children. Give me your land. Give me your home. Give me it, taking it all. Yeah. Wait a second. I've got a plan. I, ha I got a crew. I was going on a cruise. Mm-mm taking your cruise it's you're losing the cruise you're losing your vacation time you're losing that little that little kitty you kept up in the you know your 401k it's gone cruel time Tolstoy you must told surrender him. all these things says whoever is under the influence of the supreme Kali eternal time must surrender his most dear life what to speak of other things such as wealth honor children land and home your father, brother, well-wishers, and sons are all dead and passed away. Hmm. Yourself, you have expended the major portion of your life. Your body is now overtaken by inv invalidity. Is that how you pronounce it, Mara? Invalidity. And you are living in the home of another. You have been blind from your very birth, and recently you have become hard of hearing. Just bringing that up. <laughs> Just, and recently <laughs> your memory is shortened and your intelligence is disturbed your teeth are loose i wonder if you check them 
How do you, how do you know? Give me that front molar. Yeah. Your teeth are loose. Your liver is defective. And you are coughing up mucus. Let's read the commentary on this one. Read the commentary. He's getting, this is the tough love, right? You this are a mess. You used to be this big, strong king. He was really, even though he's blind, he was like really powerful. Super powerful. Yeah. He once crushed a... Iron... An iron, you know how they have those jujitsu dummies? Ever see those? You like wrestle a jujitsu dummy? Mm. They're like these big dummies you could practice jujitsu on. They made an iron dummy out of Bima so they could practice. So Duryodhana could practice sparring with, and he looked like his enemy. Duryodhana's enemy was Bima. And so um, Dhritarashtra went to hug Bima. Then Bima put the iron. It was like kind of like after the war, they're supposed to make up. Okay, let's have a hug. Let's let, hug it out. Hug, hug it, it out. out with the Pandavas. <laughs> yeah, but they knew that because because Bima had killed his sons, that they better not have it be Bima. They put that iron form that Duryodhana used to practice on there in front of him, and he went to Here, hug, hug it. The ma- hug the mannequin, Shri Rasta. You're blind. You won't be able to tell anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then he hugs the iron. Uh, mannequin and he crushes the mannequin who's like had superhuman strength yeah okay oh here's the purport the symptoms of old age which had already been developed in Dhritarashtra, were all one after another pointed out to him as warning that death was nearing very quickly you have any of these things going on Rogu? um teeth are okay, okay. coughing up phlegm uh, occasionally <laughs> what else was there mara uh, is your, is your memory has been shortened. Memory is bad. That's Kali Yuga. I'm going to blame that on Kali Yuga. What else? Hard of hearing. I mean, that happens for you. That's from being in a band for years. For a little hard of hearing. And, I haven't been um, blind from birth, so you're good. Not man. physically blind, but I'm spiritually blind, and I'm, wor- I'm working on that. I'm working on my spiritual blindness right now. Your intelli- is your intelligence disturbed? I'd say no. my intelligence is completely disturbed. You're, you're yeah. doing good. You're doing. Good. I'm pretty much a spiritual train wreck at this point. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Throw me a lifeline, please. <laughs> All right. Um, the signs pointed out by Vidura in the body of Dhritarashtra were signs of apaksaya or dwindling of the material body before the last stroke of death. I got these things going on. I'll just be honest, Rebel. I got some of these things going on. I get it, man. We're 54. This is what happens. You know? Mm-hmm. You go to the doctor and you say something's wrong. Yeah, something's wrong with my knee. You know, sometimes they used to say, oh, it's wrong with your knee. Okay, you got to do this. You got you say something's wrong with your body now at our age. They're like, yep. They don't get that, That's just what it is. You, that's, uh, they'll give you some physical therapy to do or something. I go, then it will be done. No, you're going to have that forever. You mean the physical? Th- yeah, you got to do that physical therapy forever now. It's it. That's it. They're pulling the plug. Uh, the body is but born. The body is born. It develops. It stays. It creates other bodies, dwindles, and then vanishes. Those are the six symptoms of the soul. The, the six symptoms of the body, right? Well, that the soul is there, though. Like, if you see something is born and that it grows and that it stays with sometimes, that it reproduces that it becomes disease and dwindles and ages and then it dies. By the way, listeners out there, there is a great book. I don't know if you ever read this book, but in the, in the Vedic literature, they always talk about the six symptoms of this, like this, the six symptoms of life. It grows, it stays for some time, it gives, right? And then there'll be the four principles or the five this. There's a book called, have you ever heard of this? Nectar by Numbers. I think I have. It's a great book. If you okay. love trivia, it's a great book. It'll go by the all. It go by all the things that they say one, all the things that say two, all the things that say by three. It's a great. It's a great book, especially if you like Vedic trivia. Rogu gets was excited it, about these things. It wasn't made for Vedic trivia, but I whip it out at the dinner table and try to stomp on my kids with it. Okay. <laughs> and they get me back with Mahabharat trivia. Mm-hmm. My kids followed Akadasi yesterday, by the way. Near jaw? Not near jaw, but Akadasi. Okay. Without my, me prompting, I said nothing. They just followed. I'm sort that. of proud of them. With such foolish ideas, they became overtaken by such temporary no, engagements. No, 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 but foolish men. But foolish men want to make a permanent settlement of the perishable body and think, this is my estate. These are my children. This is my society. This is my country. 
etc. And they think all those things will give them protection. With such foolish ideas, they become overtaken by such temporary engagements and forget altogether that they must give up this temporary body and take a new one, again to arrange for another term of society, friendship, and love. <laughs> again yeah, to again. perish, ultimately. I tell you, the Bhagavatam, it, it cuts right through all the ups and downs in the material world, right? There's cruel things happening in the material world. And then there's great things that are happening in the material world and more cruel things. And not so cruel, but not good. And then not so great, but pretty good. And then love and then heartbreak. And, and, the, and, 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 and the Bhagavatam just cuts it through. It's like, it's all temporary. Don't you get it? It's all temporary. All the ups and downs of this material world. Right now we're going through a down. It's like, my wife is saying to me, it's like living a nightmare. It's like being in a nightmare. And you know what? The season changes and everything's, oh, everything's prosperous. And then it's a nightmare again. And it'll just go up in waves. And this is samadhi we're trying to find in between those waves. Where we have some integrity about the way we live and the way we treat people every day. It's everyday activism. And it's, you, gotta be on, you gotta be on it. The way you treat people, the way you behave in this world, you got to be on it moment to moment, moment to moment. Not when things are just down, when things are up too. You can't get swept away by success. When things are peachy and, and, and sunny days, because the sunny days will end too. We need to develop that sama, that evenness in ups and downs and be connected. And that manifests in the way we love one another, in the way we treat our brothers and sisters. And I'm going to extend that because a brother and sister just doesn't have a human body. We're not fighting for humanitarianism. That's old school. We're fighting for the protection and love of every soul because every soul goes through pain. We don't want to see anything suffer. And we are trying to live in this world where we're trying to minimize our suffering. And you'll hear this again and again. It's going to come in not just the form of words and actions or violence. It's going to come in the way we treat each other on a regular basis, even in simple dealings. It's going to come in the way we treat animals. It's going to come in, uh, come, uh, manifest in the way we live and what we think, uh, and, and we're going to start to end up living a simpler life. And these uh, points about connecting with nature taking care of being, being a steward of the land, of the, of, of, the, of the animals, a loving maintainer of the animals. This is going to manifest again and again. That's why all these things, we can relate to these values of human rights. We can relate to them. They have a big thing to do with what we're speaking, but we have to extend it to animal rights. We have to extend it to earth rights. That's why this is not a spiritual sidestep. This is the, the box, not by a long shot. This is Shabda Brahma. This is going to the core of all the problems of this world. Go. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> I'm gonna pass the baton to you now. Thank you. No, the Bhagavad Gita is powerful like that. We're not bodies. We're spiritual beings. Shall we continue? Yeah. No, that was great. Thank you. <laughs> Shall we? Yes, yes, we should. So he says they forget their permanent identity and become foolishly, foolishly active for, for impermanent occupations, forgetting altogether their prime duty. Saints and sages like Vidura approach such foolish men to awaken them to the real situation. But they, t but they take such sadhus and saints as parasites of society and almost none of and almost all of them refuse to hear the words of such sadhus and saints although they welcome show bottle sadhus and so-called saints who can satisfy their senses you know you want to explain what a show bottle is i think that might be an old word people still you know, say show bottle guru figures and so on that just come and they say all oh, this nice sweet stuff but they never come in and tell you what vidura just told you to rastra right they're not yeah. actually representing the message as it's handed down in these sacred texts. No, it's, it's, it's classic. You'll see a sadhu. They're not quite, they're just like, just love, just and love. Collecting yeah, followers. Just love. And, yeah. yeah, they follow. You see it a lot, especially in India. Just love, just love. 
Show bottle. Did, is that what it said? Show bottle? Did show bottle. What is a show bottle, Mara? I, I would have. Can you search that thing up? What a show I mean, I would assume is. that, like, if you have a shop and you got like a kind of like a, a show bottle in the window, it doesn't actually have anything in it, but it looks sure. like a bottle of something, but it doesn't actually have it. So this looks like a sadhu or a saint, but they don't really have any substance within to deliver. Mara, you don't buy that. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Wait, I don't care about your wait, speculation. <laughs> 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 Just seeing what Wikipedia, the uh, ultimate yeah, guru, has let's to check say out about Wikipedia. this. All right, Mary, you can look that up, please. Um, they forget. Okay, where are we? The door it. was not a sadhu to satisfy the ill-gotten sentiment of Dhritarashtra. He was correctly pointing out the real situation of life and how one can save oneself from such catastrophes. Can Wake I up. Tell a story? Can I tell a story about your, your guru chastising me? Yeah. I oh, love those stories, sir. Love those. Yeah, stories. Look at Mara immediately smiles ear to ear. Yeah, please. Let me hear about you getting humiliated. <laughs> no. Um, this is, uh, it's important though, because sometimes we think of these sadhus as love. Right? But a sadhu is cutting and we want that. We want our ego to be cut. So here's what was happening. I was new, Bach, new, Bhakta, practicing Bhakti, Brahmachari. And me and Kastuba were, uh, we were with Kastuba's guru and like 13 other Brahmacharis and one other Swami. Both these Swamis were a little bit, they sort of like were very strict and very strong and very cutting. And uh, but Kastuba's guru, he was like the emperor Swami. He was incredibly sharp, incredibly smart, incredibly wise, incredibly cultured. And um, everybody went out and just uh, went. This was in Potomac, Maryland, where we lived in the ashram there for a short time. We lived all over the world, didn't we? It's amazing. Yeah. We lived all over. The world. So what, I had a stint in my life where I lived in Potomac, Maryland. And all the monks used to go out and at the mall. The mall is right in front of the uh, Air and Space Museum and the Smithsonian Institute. And they used to set up musical instruments and they would just chant. And busloads of kids from all over America would come to the Smithsonian Institute. It's a big series of museums. And, um, and they, would just, they would just chant and all these kids would like hear the holy name and dance and stuff like that. The videos of that, you can still see some of them. And it was, they would <laughs> yeah. do this thing. Jaina Tai was there too. And Henry was Gina there. Jaina Tai was like, he would, Jaina Tai was the person that would go out and encourage all these like school kids to dance. <laughs> Jaina Tai was out there dancing. And then they would and, do this thing where they said like, now we're going to have a dance contest. Whoever dances the best, like gets one of these books or something like that. And all these kids would just like start dancing. They'd be like, Dozens of kids out there dancing. And, it was know. almost like fulfilling Lord Chaitanya's prophecy to see a bunch of people just singing and dancing. Just came in chanting. on a bus from Kansas and they're dancing to the Kirtan. Now, where's Bakta Louie? Now, Bakta Louie's got to understand, like, I'm coming fresh in off the hardcore scene. And I got like, first of all, I was famous. I, I joined uh, the ashram already sort of famous. And with fame comes an ego. So I had a little bit of an ego there. Ego, okay. A little bit of an ego. I'm yeah. Ray Capo. Yo, you don't know who yeah. I am? <laughs> yeah, and I had sort of like a big like, you know, ego, like a little New York thing. Ugh. I had that going on. And um, and I really didn't want to go out and do all the chanting in the street like that. I really just said, you know what? I'll be cool and I'll stay back and I'll cook. I was the cook. And I'd cook for everybody, all the monks. I'd wake up earlier. We were all waking up at 2.30 and we'd go to bed at 8.30. And there was not a moment of free time. And I'd have to cook everything for breakfast. And then they'd all pack up and leave. And I'd clean up the breakfast and I'd immediately start cooking lunch. And your guru is there. I'd serve your guru. And then I'd drive the lunch out to them and bring it back, clean all that up and prepare dinner for them for them when they got back. And this went on every day and it was like exhausting. And one day your guru called me into his room with the other Swami, Gunagarai Maharaj. The other Swami. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So is and you they, and the two. So is me, but this stars. is after like, you know, after many weeks or something of doing this service and your guru just turns his chair around. He has like sort of a starship enterprise chair. So just turns around and looks at me, he goes, Dr. Ray, why don't you go down to the mall and chant with all the other devotees? 
And I was like, oh, uh, Goswami Maharaj, well, um, I'm doing the backup work here and I, I get to serve all the servants. I get to serve them all. I, you and see, I, I'm the most humble one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually get to clean up after them. And he goes, he goes, I know, but I think it's good for you to go down and chant with them sometimes. I go, I know, I, I would love to do that, but there's so much I have to do here. He goes, but I think it's important that you go out and just chant with them sometimes. And I said, there's actually no time. I mean, I mean, I'm wake up at 2.30 in the morning. I mean, but I'm working till I fall asleep. My head hits the pillow at night. And, and then Gunagari Marsh came to my defense. He said, on Bhakti Ray's defense, he works an incredible amount of time. Um, there, is not much, there is not much time in the day that he can do anything else. And he just looks at You're both like, of us and you. he goes, that's not my point. My point is, <laughs> my point is, you are a rock star and out there, you're a nobody. And you don't want to go out there and get your massive ego destroyed where you're a nobody just sitting out there singing and chanting the holy name. But I say tomorrow morning, you are going to get out there and you're going to chant there with everybody. And I don't want to hear another thing about it. Am I wrong or am I right? Right? Am I wrong, Dr. Ray? You just don't want to go out there because your ego is too massive because you have no fans out there. And I was just like, you're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, and that's why tomorrow morning you're going to wake up with everybody else, find somebody else to do the cooking, and you're going to get out there and chant. He and said, I, I go like, out there. Right? <laughs> now, not only did he say that, right? He, he said to you, he says, I go out there, right? He, he said, you know, he says, I've got, I've got like thousands of followers all the world that'll do anything. I said, you think you got a few fans and all? But but they, they, they won't do anything for you. Than your fans. <laughs> yeah, but, but he says, but I go out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It was exactly what I needed. And he was exactly right. So, so sometimes the, the guru isn't just like the love guru. The guru is also the, the knife that sort of mm -hmm. cuts, cuts through the ego. And you want that in your life. And, you know, with someone like we, Radna Swami, he's sort of like, where, where, where Tamal Krishnamarch, he was like the, the chili. Radna Swami is, it's like chutney. It's like, too hot, you can't eat it. Too sweet, you can't resist it. So sometimes you get a guru, very, very sweet. But Radha Swami, so first people like Radha Swami, you have to beg, please instruct me. Please instruct me. Please instruct me. What, how can I improve? If you have a teacher in your life that's not giving you those instructions, you got to beg them for them. Because we want those. We want the, our false ego to be dismantled. What do you think, Mara? Yes. I think your false ego was entirely dismantled, Roger, and that's why you are so nice now. And not that you weren't then. It was just a fine tuning. Are you muted or something? Say something. Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Did we finish that? Yeah, it's time to crank out the music. Well, all right. There we go. Please instruct me, Kostuba. Well, I just did. I said crank up the music, and you, and you did. Thank you. Now you can instruct me. Dance? <laughs> instruct you to dance. I'm waiting for Mara to say it, but she's not saying it. That was my, her cue before. What do you think, Mara? She was supposed to say, please instruct me, but she's not saying oh, it. I got you. <laughs> I don't want to have my false ego dismantled anymore today on the show. You think you're so powerful with your Simon's catering? And your Wikipedia. Famous chef. <laughs> <laughs> Columbia County's number one catering business. Private school. Private school captain of the debate team, girls, field hockey team. Did, did you uh, find out anything about Show Bottle? Oh, yeah. So it's um, from the 19th century. It's in a pharmacist window. Normally filled with See that? See that, Rogan? You didn't believe Good. me. You didn't have any Why faith. Why don't I just believe Costuba instead of Wikipedia? It shows where I put my faith. Right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. It's a, a beautiful Wednesday. I got to tell you the great story I have with Bakta Ed, who's, who's crazy on our uh, Wisdom of the Sages uh, Patreon party we got going on. Oh, yeah. I had an incredible conversation with Bakta Ed. Yes, Remind sir. me. I gotta invite him on the show just for, you have to have him like walk-in Wednesdays where we just invite somebody in for 10 minutes and get to know them. But 
He's you a know great what guy. The, the biggest one will be is when we finally bring on the Golden Brown family. They never make public appearances. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's why it'll be such an exclusive. <laughs> I want to see the entire family, though. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening to us on Apple Podcasts on Stitcher, on Spotify, and on YouTube. And thanks to everybody. And yeah, leave us a five-star rating. If you're on YouTube, you write those comments and say something. Ah! And everybody on Zoom, thanks for joining. If you want to join us on Zoom, you can do get the secret code from Mara, Wisdom of the Sages 108 at gmail.com. And you can leave your questions for question day. Now we do this dance. Every morning we dance, every morning we sing. It's part of our spiritual evolution. Isn't it great to have a spiritual practice where one of the principle is you must sing and dance. Have to do it? Yeah. You can even dance from your chair. Did any of the great sages ever say anything about lip syncing, the importance of lip syncing? I'm not familiar with any such reference. No. Naratam Das Thakur never said lip syncing, always lip sync. Not that I know lip-sync, of. Lip sync, lip sync, lip <laughs> sync. It's the only way. It's the only way. God.